batch and continuous culture. Okay, so when we're working with microorganisms in biotechnology, then we're going to produce our product in one of two ways, either batch culture or continuous culture. And we're going to look at those here. Most of this is going to be on batch because these are the ones they tend to ask. Um, the details on continuous culture coming at the end. So let's look at batch culture first. Culture obviously means just to reproduce microorganisms. The classic graph that you're going to get is going to look like this. I'm just going to finish this depending on where my graph finishes. Okay, so we're going to, this axis, the y-axis is going to be the log number of microorganisms. And it's going to be plotted against time. So we're going to hand, end up with four phases, basically. At the beginning, you introduce a small number of microorganisms. And so we're not quite at zero, but just above zero. And in the beginning, it might be going up slightly, but it's going to be relatively flat. This is called the lag phase. I'm going to label these up so you don't worry. We're then going to go into a new phase where they're basically they're getting ready. They're produce, preparing the enzymes, expressing the genes they need to live off the culture medium that they're in. So maybe there's lactose in there. You've done maybe studied the lac operon. So they're, they're going through the process of transcribing the genes to so they can hydrolyze lactose, for example. Then they're going to have the enzyme and they're going to be able to break it down. And they're going to go through a very rapid phase of increasing in numbers. Then they're going to level off, and then they're going to decrease. Okay, so these are our four phases, and I'm going to delineate these with vertical dotted lines. And we're going to label them up. So I'm just going to call them A, B, C, and D. I'm going to add a few more bits and pieces to this graph, but at the end, this is the main part. We're going to look at what happens to the biomass of the microorganisms in there and the nutrients and stuff like that as well. But let's start off with... A, this is called the lag phase. Now be careful here. Be very careful with this A. Clearly an A if it needs to be written in capital letters. Because we have another phase, the B is actually called the log phase. And the A and the O, if you get them in any, if the examiner can't read what your writing is, then you're going to get no marks for it. Okay, so during this phase, obviously population growth is minimal or low. Genes are being activated. For example, lactose or lactase. In fact, the technical end, the reason I said lactose, I'm going to get lactose permease. If you watch the lac operon video, then the enzyme is lactose permease. But lactase is probably good enough for, for this detail here, unless this is specifically on the emphasis of hydrolyzing lactose. So enzymes are being transcribed and translated. And the substrate is starting to be broken down. There's slow population growth. B, what are the characteristic features of this is either called the exponential, and I generally call it that just to confuse the, the, the difference with lag and log, but it's also called the log phase. So what's happening here? Well, we're primed up for life. There's loads of nutrients around, so there's rapid cell division. In fact, I'm going to say population growth is probably better. We've got abundant nutrients. And cell production or rate of cell division is greater than cell death. So they're, they're growing faster than they're dying. Be a bit careful using the word cells if we're talking about a fungi. So this could be a classic case of um, penicillium. And to make penicillin, that has to be done in batch culture, in which case we need to be a bit careful with use of cells. They grow with extending their mycelium and their, their sort of cellular. But we need to be a bit careful with that word. So cell production or microorganism growth is greater than microorganism death. C, we have the stationary phase quite clearly. It's an easy one to remember. So what can we say here? We can say cell production is the same as rate of uh, cell death. We can say this is because there's a lack of nutrients or a buildup of waste products. You could also mention this being the carrying capacity. 
which if you need to know what that means, it's the sort of the maximum population that a, an ecosystem can maintain. And last up, D is for the death phase. So here, nutrients are running out or waste products are too much and death rate is increased. I'm going to add two things down here. Okay, so let's say lack of nutrients or build up of waste products again. Now you can also get here, if this question is about penicillin and penicillium, just going to tack on a bullet point. So this is when antimicrobial prop compounds are going to be expressed. So if this is the uh, growth curve for penicillium, the back, the fungus which makes penicillin, then it's at this point it's kind of happy-ish up to here. But when it's in its death phase, then it's going to basically nutrients are really scarce here. This is when competition is the highest. And therefore, this is the only time when penicillium makes penicillin. Um, and that's because it wants to kill other bacteria and other microbes so that it can eat the nutrients and they can't. Again, be careful with your spelling, penicillium makes penicillin and you can see obviously in my handwriting is not the best but make this clear this ium in fact you should join that up there okay right so what are the methods for making things in batch culture we're going to use the closed fermenter or closed fermentation vessel What do we mean by closed? Well, the microorganisms and the nutrients are added at the start, and then you basically shut the lid and nothing is added or removed. And then the products are separated at the end. The temperature is usually controlled, and this can be done with a water jacket because Generally, these processes are going to be exothermic. They're going to give out heat, and so you can overheat sometimes. So We can also say that paddles or stirrers or aerators are used to mix the nutrients to ensure that they're evenly distributed. This is often asked the question, why, is the, why do you need to use sterile air? Well, obviously, you don't want to introduce any other microbes into your batch fermenter. And finally, we can say that at the end, the nutrients are depleted. Okay, so how's this different to continuous culture method? They don't ask about this one quite so often. So what do you do with continuous culture? Well, it's an open fermenter or fermentation vessel. So nutrients are added and the products are removed at a constant rate. So you're continually adding some nutrients and you're continually removing some products. Well, why do we do this? Well, we keep the microorganisms growing in the exponential or log phase. So it's the most efficient in terms of production over time. and the conditions are kept constant. So the, the amount of nutrients, the concentration of glucose would remain constant throughout. So for example, we wanna keep a constant, obviously temperature and pH, oxygen, glucose. There's loads of things we could mention there. Why do we ever use batch culture then? If this is maintaining everything in the exponential phase you're going to get your product much faster well as i mentioned some some genes are only expressed at different phases of batch culture such as penicillin being expressed in the death phase and so if you kept penicillium in exponential phase you're never going to make penicillin which is the whole point of doing this i said i'd add some more things to this graph well let's look at biomass this is quite straightforward so biomass is going to start low because it's going to be kind of similar to the amount of organisms basically so biomass is going to go up 
these might be on the same scale they might be on different scales you're going to get something mirroring um, this is obviously going to be something along those lines the total amount of biomass yeah is pretty much always going to increase now if we're looking at the nutrients or maybe a specific nutrient in there we're going to start off with it high so there's lots of nutrients and not many microorganisms Again, could be on the same scale, could be on a different scale. As the exponential phase is continuing, the products are being used up. So we basically, it's almost going to be the reverse. And we're going to get down to potentially zero down here somewhere. This is the log number of micro. This is a logarithmic scale because they're increasing, e doubling effectively each time. This isn't a linear scale; it's a log scale. But um, I'm sure you don't. They're not going to ask too many questions on this. So it would go one, ten, hundred, thousand, ten thousand, etc. Would be this scale here. <laughs> 